Okay, I think this will be my last video, hopefully, in this little mini grid and solar home systems uh, kind of uh, sessions. Now, um, what I'm going to do this time, hopefully, is uh, I really want to keep it short, and I, I, I really want to explain the structure of a model. Okay, as usual. Uh, um, all right, I put some pictures on here these days, and I actually think this is kind of the best way to look at a mini grid. So, a mini grid, uh, you better incorporate both the demand, the load, the supply, and the cost characteristics. And at the end of the day, we want to get what if what kind of things are most economic for a, 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 a mini grid and i've a, a allowed you to put in i can't i seem to be stuttering oh. i've allowed you to put in battery capacity and as i'm going along i better kind of uh, fix things oh now it's a little bit out of order whatever okay and uh where this is like a for me it's like a little uh, uh, utility system or a big utility system. What's the demand? What's the supply? What's the costs? What's the cost of distribution? And just very quickly to go through this, I said, well, the first thing we we've got to do is define the the demand, and we better define how many televisions we have, how many people we have, what the household characteristics are, how many sawmills we have. This is an example from my good friend Umesh and my good friend Dennis in, in Rwanda, who have really been letting me work with them and taking it through them. So they have a lot of, in, in Rwanda, there were a thousand different hills and you can put a lot of them have some mini hydro. So that's one alternative is to put in mini hydro. Now what I did here, is I, I allow I love these stupid spinner boxes, and maybe next week I won't. But whatever, oh, see I didn't. Maybe I don't love them so much. We put them in, but I also wanted to be have you a, be able to turn things on and off. So all this does for every uh, alternative. There's a, just a little bit of a a. a thing where we thing whatever god i multiply the true by this so i can turn it off or use the spinner box no big deal is that for the demand we can use a, a drop down box and we can do some log things don't that doesn't mean anything that's not like a circular reference but we can define different different end uses really and then look at different load patterns where we use load at the nighttime or the daytime and perhaps we want to make a, a load that's much more industrial with with mainly uh, sawmills or something okay and then we go through the hydro supply uh, potentially the the solar supply and when we put the solar supply we can we'll do the same thing we can put it in put it out that's how how it works and then I also put diesel in as backup. We have some uh, potentially um, that would be called dispatchable. I hope I did the same thing with the diesel. It looks like I missed something, but that, that, I'm not going to worry. Right now, I'm not going to go crazy. Okay, and then for the energy demand, this, so here, here, let me just start. Okay, so the way this should always start is you begin with the. Uh, demand you go to supply and then you can put some distribution in and then we're going to have some pages that go through the demand and try to make it so it's easy it's kind of i don't want to use this stupid word called user friendly but so we can understand what we're doing and 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 uh in this case, put different profiles, get it very flexible. We can add our new profiles. And then when we define a profile, we define how much wattage of capacity do you have for various different kind of things. So how, how many 
if you have schools, how much does the school use? And finally, unfortunately, particularly if you use solar, you better define how much each of these usage use on an hour by hour basis. And we just have to remember one thing that a kilowatt hour equals a kilowatt times an hour. And these are the hours here, and these are the kilowatts. And we go backwards and we put all the demand in. And then I have all the characteristics really of a hydro plant. And with hydro, you have to use the kind of hydro, you don't have to, but the potential, the hydro equation that's a function of the head, the gravity, and the efficiency of the turbine and all that. And then for diesel, you have to, it, you, well, I keep on saying have to, well, it's kind of, it is. You put the efficiency of the diesel in, the diesel prices, and the capital cost, which we're going to put in for everything else. For solar and battery, we put in the costs. And for batteries, we, we, we put in how much kilowatt hours you get, not how many kilowatts. And you might have to put things like the efficiency, the round trip efficiency. Now, with solar, I did that whole video on showing you how you find different solar patterns. So uh, here, here's our supply. And then once we have the supply, we go and we make our dispatch. And that's the big deal. And I put a whole separate video on this and said, OK, once we have our demand, how do we dispatch our demand? How much do we get from hydro, solar, and all of that? Right now, I didn't dispatch it. My point, one of the big points I want to uh, uh, emphasize here is, number one, why are there a bunch of blank lines? I keep changing this. If you, uh, 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 oh, I'm way too at the bottom. We put our demand. I was wondering what was happening. We put our demand and then uh, a supply. And then if we have to charge a battery, we, we don't want to start our, our, our analysis right in the middle of the charge. You want to start before you've charged. So you have to do this reordering business. I really think you do. I've struggled with this a lot of times. And then you see how much demand you actually met from the renewable production and then you see how much you have to charge and discharge your battery and after you've charged and discharged your battery you look at what kind of diesel capacity you have and how much demand is unmet and then once you do that you can put some distribution cost in and put some financing assumptions and then make a little financial model and i've got another other videos on all of that Okay, so that's the structure of the model. You start with demand, go to supply, and all of this. And I was going to put some different demand profiles in, and I'm not going to right now. Okay, well, I changed my mind just now. I will. Let's put one crazy demand profile. So over here, if you want to add a demand profile, you go to your mini grid control, and we have this drop down box. But at the top here, I hope, right up here, we, we can put. We can add another thing where we put just sawmills. So I'm going to be mean, and I'm going to say, ah, you don't get any, any light in your house. You don't get anything like that. I'm just going to put in 100 sawmills. OK, I just make a new little scenario. Now, what that does, the first thing is it just uses a drop down box. Ooh, it looks like I ran out of space a little bit. But uh, uh, we, we, we now we have 100 sawmills. Then the next thing we have to define is in the sawmills, how much does the each sawmill use? And uh, for one unit, it looks like it uses 2,500 watts. OK, and I, so I put, ooh, 100 is too many, isn't it? Let's put 10. OK, we're going to make a, a little place with 10 sawmills. And then we go down to our sawmills, and we see how we're going to make people use them. And I'm going to be really me. I'm going to find the sawmills down here. And I'm going to say, no, you have to work 24 hours a day. No, you have to work four in the morning and everything else. So we just put our little load profile in for the sawmills. And then when we now our our oops, our demand is totally flat and we can see uh oh if we put in solar capacity here we get surplus solar and we got to use a battery to to manage our sawmills but instead if i don't have sawmills if i put one of my just uh, 
scenarios with some households, that is it. Now, the red line is unserved energy. Big utility companies, Consolidated Edison of New York or EDF in France or any of these utility companies, when they, ouch, whatever. No, I'm not going to move them. I'm going to restrain myself. Well, they should be moved over. They compute how much people or electricity are, is going to be used, how many nuclear plants they have. And I've talked about this in other say, situations. And then what's left over, maybe they don't have enough to serve everything. They call that unserved energy. And they have all these fancy things where they say, oh, here's the cost of unserved energy if we have an outage. Here's how much it costs consumers. Here's their lost utility, marginal utility, or something like that. Okay, that's what they do. So if we have no capacity, everything's unserved. Or we could say we're just using our, uh, our, our uh, kerosene lamps, our candles. Okay, now let's do, oh, I didn't want to do that either. Okay, now let's put in some hydro capacity. And if I put in some hydro capacity, if that's the amount of capacity available from the river, we got a little bit of a problem. We have too much hydro capacity for our load. So I'm going to put lower hydro capacity in. Now, when I do that, unfortunately, and if you imagine a, a place here, and I think, oh, I got to do something. Oh my gosh. Why is this? Okay. And now <laughs> I think there was a little delayed reaction. Now I put a much smaller hydro in. Then I have this situation. Let's look at what we have. Okay. And the point is the hydro cost will not stay the same. If I've got enough power from the river to give me, this was a case, to give me 20 kilowatts, but I don't need to use it all. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay. So let's only put nine in. That means there'll be a little bit of unserved energy. That's what this unserved energy is all about. But the cost of the hydro might be a lot higher because we have to build the same little penstock pipe thing we have, and we have to do a lot of the same things. A lot of those costs are, we, we can't just reduce them one for one if we reduce the capacity. So I made a higher kind of hydro cost. And we sh I should have put a little spinner box, which I will, I guess, on the co operating cost. We've got to take account of all that stuff. And then we've got some unserved energy. Now, when you press this goal seek, it just goes to the financial model, sees what kind of price. Oh, my gosh, that's a high price. Okay, and we haven't even served it. We've wasted all this stuff. Now, what we could do is we could say, oh, let's put a battery in. Now, if we put a battery in, I put this little thing in where you charge the battery here and then discharge it later, and then we'll do another goal seek and see what the price is. Now, I've got to uh, stop for a minute. All right, I was worried about that price of electricity that just showed up. I might have to go back and look at the model. That hydro was too too much when we put that hydro in, okay? So what we can do is start putting in different things. Now, what you could do is also add diesel capacity instead, and then you de dispatch the diesel, and you got to pay for the diesel, and you see what the price is then. Okay, I just lowered the hydro price. Oh, I know. I have Just to show what, what kind of different capacities you can use, uh, it, it, it is interesting. Now, let's switch it over to solar. So let's take it up. Now we've got all unserved energy, and now we can put in some solar capacity. And I put in 25, perhaps 25 is a little too much, or we can put in more. Now we've got unserved energy out here. So of course we need to add our battery. And, we have, and when we added a battery, it charged here with the, the green. No, no, the green is the, the, green is the charge. And the, the blue is the discharge. And we can put a little bigger battery in and see what happens. Oh, that didn't help. We've got to put a little higher solar in to get rid of our unserved energy. And then we can, for our solar, we can look at what happens in different situations. That's why I did that whole a little analysis with different load curves. And then it goes all the way to the financial model and shows you uh, kind of... Uh, what the net result is, what the end result is in terms of what kind of price of electricity you have to charge. And if you have to charge, add, now th this, is, this is getting good. 
Well, I should have just stopped here. Now we have about 13 cents in this kind of solar plus battery. Not so bad. That's a lot of what people pay in 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 in, in regular whatever. Not regular. Ooh, what an asshole. Uh, sorry. Uh, 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 oh, I got to call it there. Uh, that's what you get. Okay. That's how you can just manage it. And then I would encourage you. I'm going to, of course, put this whole file on the website so you can think about the parts of it the big deal is 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 what does what how to present you know, you know how to what does what how to start with demand go from demand to supply go to a dispatch model and once you have a dispatch model see how much energy you're generating and what's the cost of that energy the capital cost or in the case of diesel the the the, the diesel fuel it says kerosene there i should say I'm going to put diesel fuel there, okay? So that's the, and if you include distribution, the cost goes a whole lot higher, of course. And then you can see, what do I really have to do to make it work? These could be completely outlandish. And is it better to put hydro in or not hydro in? Or solar? And is it better to put a diesel backup, even though that's going to create some pollution? Is it I know it's all bad, but uh, uh, is it better to do that to back it up? Or is it better to use that surplus energy in charge of the hydro and, and recharge it? And you can do all of this with this little, the big key is to get this uh, uh, after the solar, this dispatch. Do a little tiny dispatch model. And I do it now. This is all set up to do just one day, okay? And I think it's, for me, we kind of stopped here. It's good to do one day. Perhaps you can take one summer day, one fall day, and do some other stuff with it. Uh, um, but I think for illustrating purposes, oh, we got a, the battery bounce maybe. Uh, okay, what happens? We've got too much. Oh, that's because I put some hydro in. Oh, now the battery balance went down to zero. So you, you kind of kind of size the battery and size the systems, see just how much you really need, and try to figure out what the most cost-effective uh, way to do things is. And I'm going to stop this video for once.